understand my favorite song is not long enough, but it is effective for its purpose, and that is really to remind us that we should give Him all the glory, all the honor, only all the praise, because we are to worship Him. Worship is not a difficult activity, but all it is is just really taking a moment to dwell and concentrate on the fact of what God has done for you and how you react to it. And, and so that's what worship is about. Uh, it's really giving a deserving God some deserving praise. I'd like to let you know he does deserve all the praise. Yes. Now, there's so much that God does that some things we just cannot comprehend or some things we fail in forgetting, but God is still good and is still worthy. Amen. At this time, let us just bow low. We thank you for bringing us to this point. Lord, our worship, we do pray in the name that you will bless us, enable us to deliver your word, and that it will be a blessing to we, your people. Oh God, let it be able to accomplish that purpose that you have given us to us to share. Oh God, that someone can leave, oh Lord, being helped. Oh Lord, being given direction. Now, Father God, just bless us and even remember those that may not know you, that this same word can convince them. So bless us, use us now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Those that have your Bibles, we would like to invite your attention to the book of Matthew, chapter 4, looking at verse 1, and we will go down to verse 11. Matthew, the fourth chapter, verse 1, and then verse 11. And then when Jesus led, led, then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And then verse 11. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Amen. And from this passage of scripture, we would like to talk to you from this particular subject today. You can survive your wilderness. Amen. Amen. You can survive your wilderness. In the text, we witness Jesus, our Savior, being led by the Spirit into the wilderness. The reason this happens, so he could be tempted by the devil. And it's right there in verse 1, that he is purposely led into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. This experience that the master goes through is to help we believers understand that we too will have a wilderness experience. And perhaps there are some of you who feel you are in your wilderness now. And there are some who have made it through already. And there, there are some who are yet ready to go in. Wherever you are, I just start to remind you today that you can survive your wilderness. We all end up in the wilderness for different, re different reasons. If it's the will of God that you must go through it, it will also be the will of God that you survive. Because the wilderness 
physically is an uninhabited place. It can be a deserted place. It can be an isolated place. It is also mentally or spiritually can be a bewildering situation. Which means you don't have to go into the wilderness to be in the wilderness. Because I want to let you know, brothers and sisters, you can be living day to day, going through your regular routine. And for some strange reason, God will lead you into a wilderness. You're not practically or really in that wilderness that we know of to be dry, to be deserted, to be uninhabited, but you are in another wilderness that has had you kept there for a length of time wondering when are you going to come out. Because the wilderness can be a good experience as well as a bad experience. Because as long as God can be recognized as being there, you can survive your wilderness. The experience of Jesus reveals to us, amen, that we ourselves need to understand that our wilderness is going to come. But how are we going to go into it? Are we going to go into it because of what we've done? Because of something that we have allowed to come into our lives. But I do believe that the best way, and it's right in the text, first of all is to let it be a spirit-led experience. Yes. And, and, and why do I say that and, and how did I arrive there? Well, the fact is that the text speaks clearly to us. Jesus did not go there by accident, but he was led by the Spirit. And brothers and sisters, if you really want to go in the wilderness in the right way, all right, all right. you need to let the Spirit lead you. Because sometimes we can just wander haphazardly into a wilderness. Because if I could just call up the children of Israel, they would tell you that we ended up in the wilderness. And we wandered 40 years because of our disobedience to God. But in this text, we see that Jesus was led here purposely. Uh -huh. And he was led by the Spirit. And, and what I see is also that Jesus in chapter 3, at the latter end of it, had just recently been baptized. But where would that take place? That took place in the wilderness. Because if you knew John's whereabouts, he was baptizing in the wilderness of Judea. And so by chance, the first experience that the master would now face was a 40-day experience right. in the wilderness. That's right. Where the scripture will declare in verse 2 that he fasted and he also prayed there 40 days and 40 nights. And brothers and sisters, you have to understand this, that whatever you go through in life, that is good that you are led by God's Spirit. Yeah. Even if it means going through a wilderness experience. Because we see that the Master was led here because he was led there to prepare him for his mission. And why not Jesus? Because Jesus was well able, and some may ask the question, if he is the Son of God, why was it necessary for him to go into a wilderness and know that he was going to come out victorious? Well, it was done for our benefit. Because don't you understand, brothers and sisters, in life we all go through some strange experiences. Sometimes we question the fact, where did that come from? And how did I get there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But God wants us to understand in life there are going to be some times he will lead us to some places that we did not ask to go to. And, and, and you have to be ready to accept this, brothers and sisters, because sometimes a wilderness can sneak up on you. Yeah. Right. Amen. And, and, and if anybody in here today have been through experiences in life, there are some unexpected things 
that can invade your life. Yes, yes. And so Jesus is led by the Spirit, and the Spirit leads him to the purpose of now going through a test by the enemy. Yes. And so therefore, brothers and sisters, when you've been led by him, the Spirit, to go through this experience, the second thing he lets us understand is a proving experience. Yes. Now, God will purposely let us go through some ordeals yes. just to test our faith. And I pray in the house today that there are not many saints who are afraid to let God test them. All right, all right. Yes, we boast about great faith. We boast about how our faith has done this and that. But how many of us are willing to let God test that faith? And that's why when we look at the text that when he goes into the wilderness, it is to be tempted of the devil. Amen. And, and, and I'm glad that the master was ready to prove to Satan that he was still strong, although he fasted. Yeah. Because the devil, and, and don't ever let us forget about our adversary. Right. He loves to know when the best time to yeah. come your way. Yeah. Some of us don't understand that right now he's examining us. <laughs> We are in this church, yes. and we are being observed by the enemy. Yes. And the enemy wants to see by the time the service is over, yes. who is he going to upset? Y'all yes. don't hear me? But I, I challenge you on this because the devil has plans yes. for every believer that goes into the house of God. Yes. He wants to rob you of your experience. And, and, and he will do this by putting you in a desert place where he can by chance hope that he can steal your joy. He can make you sad. He can make you angry. He can make you disappointed. He can make you criticize that, listen, church wasn't like it should have been. Amen. And, and, and sometimes he will disguise it so that everybody else around you is just having a good time. But for some reason, you looking at them like wondering why. Amen. Are they the only ones shouting? But you got to understand, brothers and sisters, that the enemy desires to have us. Amen. He's no friend of yours. And don't believe the fact that he wants to be your friend. The devil loves nobody but himself. Amen. And that's why Jesus was led to the wilderness to now be tempted of the devil. And, and, and in the verses between 1 and 11, you will find out that the devil tried Jesus. Amen. How dare him? He going to wait until he felt that Jesus was physically weak. Amen. I don't know anybody in here who has tried to fast 40 days, but that's an awesome task to go without water, without bread, any type of substance, and, and just purposely sacrifice yes, yourself yes. for the purpose of God. And, and, and so the devil watched this. And he said, well, I know the 40 days I'm soon going to end. So how am I going to attack him? Listen, while he's in his wilderness. Why, how am I going to prove to the Son of God that I can get the upper hand on him? You know the first challenge he's going to Attack his physical yes. body first. He said, I know that you're hungry and yes. I know you've been out here 40 days fasting and in prayer and, and talking and meditating with your father, but I have a proposal for you. If you be the son of God, look at these stones around you. Make them be great. Isn't it like when God beats you in your wilderness. Come on now. He builds you up. Yeah. He knows how to give you the proper response yeah. to the enemy's attacks. Yeah. Now, see, the devil attacked him from his physical being first. But isn't it like Jesus? And brothers and sisters, if you have really been in your word and if you really have meditated on it day and night, you'll be able to say this. In verse 4, he says, it is written. You remind the enemy. 
Amen. And what the word of God says. He says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And, and brothers and sisters, all the devil could do was just hush for a moment because Jesus spoke to him the word of God. And brothers and sisters, I just want to remind somebody that you can't live by bread alone. If you want to go through a wilderness, you need some word in you. Word of God will prove to the enemy that you stronger than he think you are. That's why Paul, he put something to that, that when I'm weak, then am I strong. And the reason I'm weak because I'm dependent on the Lord to give me some strength. And so the devil did not just stop there, but he now takes Jesus. And, and how about this? He's going to take him to the holy city and put him on the pinnacle, which is on the top of the temple. And they're going to have the nerve to challenge him by saying that if you just throw yourself down, amen, that I'm surely that the angels will come. And, and the devil was so persuasive in verse 4 that he had the nerve to say it is written. And I have to let somebody know that the devil knows the Bible too. That's why I don't know what saints today think they can make it without the word of God. How can you stand against the enemy when you don't know your weapon? Don't you know that the Bible is that sword that each of us ought to carry? And, and, and the devil knows how to take it and turn it around on you. He's going to say to him, I will give your angels charge concerning, and in your hands, they're going to bear you up if you should dash your foot. But then here comes Jesus, knowing how to return the right words to the enemy. He says, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And see, even hearing that, the devil should have had enough. But now he always is persistent. But he took him now to a exceeding high mountain. Yes. And had the nerve to now pray on the pride of Jesus. Yes. Yes. By saying that I'm going to show you all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And all these things I'm going to give to you if you would just do this. Fall down and worship me. That sounds like a good offer. To somebody who wants everything. To somebody who can look at the glory of the world and the kingdoms and the riches that it would behold. But I want to let you know that Jesus knew better. Because he simply told the enemy this. Get thee hence, Satan. For it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Jesus proves to us. That if you want to survive your wilderness, yeah. you first need to be spiritually. Yeah. Right. Secondly, you need to know it's a proven experience. Yeah. See, God don't let us go through a wilderness yeah. without proving to us there's going to be some growth. Yeah. There's going to be some maturity. Yeah. Amen. There's going to be a change in you. Yeah. And that's what I see in the master. Yeah, yes, he went through this for 40 days. But it was the way he came out, which many of us don't realize. That when you go through your wilderness, if it's led by God, if it's proved by God, it's going to be an enduring experience. He's going to give you the patience to deal with whatever you got to go through in the midst of your wilderness. And that's what I saw in Jesus' experience, that he was able to endure what the devil threw at him. And I'm wondering, brothers and sisters, uh, is there anybody here today? Amen. Can endure your wilderness. Can tell the devil. Uh, it's for God I live. And it's for God I die. Can you tell the devil to get behind me safe? Because I realize you are an offense. You are a stumbling block. Uh, 
in my progress in God. Uh, so I don't mind if the Lord got to place me uh, in the wilderness. Uh, I believe it's going to be for my good. Because uh, anything that God does, uh, we know all things uh, work together uh, for the good of them uh, who love God uh, and are called according to his presence. Uh, I thought you ought to be reminded today, uh, whoever you are, uh, you can survive your wilderness uh, long as you got King Jesus uh, on your side. Uh, have I got a wilderness? Uh, I'm just glad to know uh, my Savior uh, was willing to go through uh, to prove to us uh, that if he went through it, uh, he can give us the same power uh, to make it through our wilderness. Uh, and you ought to be reminded today, uh, whoever you are, uh, whatever you're going through, uh, God wanted me to tell you, uh, you can survive uh, your wilderness. Uh, and I know sometimes uh, you may have to cry in the wilderness, uh, but God is still able uh, to keep you up. Uh, you have to cry sometimes uh, in frustration. Uh, sometimes uh, you got to question God. Uh, and say, Lord, why uh, did you let this happen? Uh, but in the midst of going through, uh, God is building you up. Uh, uh, God is maturing you. Uh, God is perfecting you. Uh, he's making you better uh, than when you went in. Uh, that's what I love. Uh, that when God takes you through, uh, you're better coming out. Uh, have I got a witness? Uh, if I could call up Israel, uh, they'll be reminded uh, that God told them, uh, for yes, I let you go 40 years, uh, wandering in the wilderness. Uh, you never went without food, uh, never went without water, uh, never went without shelter. Uh, in fact, the shoes uh, you had on your feet, uh, I let them last so uh, 40 years. Uh, the clothes on your back, uh, they never wore out uh, because I was with you. Uh, in your wilderness, uh, you wondering how uh, did you survive? Uh, God wants you to know today, uh, it's because of me. Uh, I was holding your hand. Uh, it's because of me. Uh, when you feel like stumbling, uh, I held you up. Uh, when you felt like falling, uh, I kept you from falling. Uh, I thought you ought to know uh, by way of heaven, uh, whoever it is. Uh, you to know uh, you can survive uh, your wilderness. Uh, tell the devil uh, thank you very much uh, for being a participant uh, in my maturity, uh, for being a participant uh, in making me better. Uh, knowing my God, He has aided uh, to keep me uh, from falling. Uh, I thank God uh, that He knows uh, what's best for us. Uh, and I got a witness. Uh, Uh, I made it uh, comfortable for you. Uh, although there are times uh, you might have to strain, uh, you might have to struggle, uh, you might want to give up. Uh, God told me to tell you, uh, you can survive. Uh, your willingness, uh, well, let me make it plain, uh, your willingness uh, might be sickness, uh, but God said uh, you can survive. Uh, Uh, knowing this, uh, 
In fact, he know how much you can take. And he gonna help you make it through. The burden might be heavy right now, but God knows how to lighten every burden. Amen. But you got to trust God in the midst of your wilderness. Because if you go through, he will. He will bring you out. Amen. God bless you at this time. We're going to offer the invitation. Good discipleship. Uh, there might be somebody today that may have been convinced through the preached word that our God is certainly able to see us through. Because listen, whatever you are called up in, that could be your wilderness, but God wanted you to know today you can survive this. If you just trust me, listen and keep your eyes on the one that is able to see you through. Amen. Because God didn't promise that we would stay there. But there is a coming out. And boy, I'm glad that you got to come out. Because when you come out, amen, you come out shouting. Sisters, you got to trust the God that you have been assured of. Because God is going to make a way for you. But this time, if there's somebody while we extend his invitation, is there someone that is here today in the house and may not know Jesus as your personal Savior? But just to let you know that Jesus gave his life for this world. And he did that by dying on the old rugged cross. And we're so glad that the story was really just getting started when he died. Because they had to take him down from the cross and lay him in another man's tomb. Because he said some days prior to his death that in three days that he would rise again and so it was early that Sunday morning that Jesus got up with all power in his hands and so if you're here today and if you are those that will believe we say come and not be afraid one of the things about our God is that he loves everybody. And his will is life. Amen. Which he wants to give to those that will just receive his son as their Savior. Amen. And I'm glad that Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He's the life. And there's no other way but through. Jesus Christ. And if there's somebody today, amen, that's giving us some thoughts, you ought to come now and trust him. And see what he's able to do for you. A lot of declare today, brothers and sisters, that he is able. He's able to help. He's able to make a way. That God is certainly real. He's real. Amen. And all he wants to do is let you know who he is. There's nothing to be ashamed of because God is beyond our present condition. And what he will do, he will forgive. Just trust me. 